It's that time of the year again. We finally get a few days off, so we can sit back, relax and reflect on just how wild and exhausting 2025 has been for software developers. Back when I was a kid, I thought coders in 2025 would work on programming flying cars and exploring stars, but instead we got layoffs, code cleanup duty in AI slop, expensive memory chips because of the never-ending AI demand, and still no GTA 6. So let's spend the next few minutes reviewing the main tech stories from 2025. January started strong with the big guys committing $500 billion for building AI data centers in the US. As it turns out, the worldwide spending on AI will total around $1.5 trillion this year alone, and at this point the market is full of crypto scams. And, at this point, the market is full of AI models and agents, all competing to charge you a monthly subscription, and probably ultimately end up sell you ads. Software developers are supposed to get obsolete any day now, which brought the entire market into a deflationary spiral because it's going to be cheaper to buy a competent AI coding agent next year than hire a real human programmer today. More resources were shifted towards AI, more people got laid off, and the AI deals between tech companies started to look more and more like a bubble. And, talking about hyped up projects that will fail miserably, it looks like the metaverse is finally being buried quietly, with Meta officially cutting the last remaining teams working on Horizon Worlds for non-VR platforms. But don't worry though, this is not your favorite tech channel, so we'll stop talking about AI and we'll look at some actually relevant tech news. The front-end world was full of interesting updates this year. Angular kept grinding away at its modern Angular story, which basically means cutting off weight, reducing module complexity, and transitioning to a new signals-based reactivity model. Vue.js, on the other hand, turned 10 years old in 2025, and it is by far one of the most reliable and loved tools in the community. Avenue continues to do a great job pushing the ecosystem forward. Thanks to the tools he is building in his spare time, his company Void Zero managed to raise $12.5 million in a Series A. Sure, this is considered pocket change in the AI funding era, but it is still a good sign to see that, despite all the doom and gloom news about software being deprecated, there's still demand and interest for actual tools that solve real problems without trying to replace your entire job description. Now, when it comes to React, things are not looking that great. Sure, the framework still enjoys the backing of two major companies and ranks first in all usage charts, but something feels off. React 19 finally shipped, complete with the long teased compiler and a bunch of low-level primitives that promise to fix the re-render problem once and for all. But the main issue is that React's reactivity model is deprecated and bloated compared to the modern standards and its much-awaited compiler is simply treating the symptoms, not the underlying issues. And, to add fuel to the fire, React server components, brought to you by Vercel, managed to turn a complex problem into an even more complex solution. And then they introduced major security flaws on top of everything else. The reality is that server components promised to reduce bundle sizes and improve performance, but in reality, they added another layer of indirection. So now, we have to deal with async boundaries, streaming rendering and client server segregation. Honestly, to me at least, this sounds too much of a hassle considering some of the alternatives. And, of course, life without new JS frameworks is really not that fun, so 2025 brought us Ripple. The lead developer behind it is a former core team engineer at React and the core maintainer of Svelte.js, so Dominic is probably one of the few people who can actually build yet another front-end framework in good faith. While Ripple is an interesting take on all the good practices of front-end development, I feel like we finally got to the point where this doesn't really matter anymore. 2025 was the year when all major frameworks mostly aligned on the same fundamental ideas. Signals are great for reactivity, the DOM is not slow anymore, partial hydration or resumability are employed for performance, and server-side rendering is the new default. Everything else is just a matter of your preferred dev experience and available tools. So I think we can finally say that we are over the whole front-end framework debate. However, the JavaScript ecosystem is far from getting boring and the war between JS runtimes has just started. Node remains by far the most popular option here, and they are slowly working towards solving one of their main drawbacks. Yes, an attempt at TypeScript support is finally being made, although it is mostly about improving dev support. The newly introduced strip types flag allows you to enjoy the benefits of a type system in your IDE, and then simply removes all those annotations when you run the node command. The node ecosystem, however, still has a big security problem, and the second half of 2025 was full of NPM security incidents, which, once again, reminded everyone that trusting random packages maintained by unpaid strangers might not be the best security model. There were multiple high-profile cases of dependency hijacking, including a few that sat undetected for weeks inside transitive dependencies. 
One of the best alternatives for Node was Ban for the better part of the year. Ban started as a faster alternative to Node and was welcomed with a lot of excitement by the community. However, in early December, Ban announced that they'll be acquired by Anthropic, the owners of Cloud Code. While this might be great for the team behind Ban, it immediately raised questions about the long-term independence and direction of the project. This leaves a gap for other alternatives like Dino, which is also trying to become a Node.js replacement while pursuing a more healthy revenue model through their Dino deploy services. The driving force behind Dino is Ryan Dahl, who also created Node back in the day. Ryan is also the driving force behind the FreeJS movement, which gained momentum in 2025 and is trying to put some legal pressure on Oracle in hopes they'll release the JavaScript trademark. Okay, switching gears to a different war, let's look at the browser chaos of 2025. First, Google faced a legal battle because of their Chrome monopoly, so now they are forced to share their data with rivals and also end exclusive search deals. This legal battle brought Firefox into the spotlight as well, since their main revenue stream comes from exactly those kinds of exclusive search deals with Google. Brave reached 100 million users, which is a huge milestone considering the behemoth it is facing, and positioned itself in a much more economically sound situation thanks to some of their adjacent products. But the real bad news of 2025 is that Arc is dead. Arc, the much-hyped browser built by the browser company, officially pivoted out of existence and is now replaced by, you've guessed it, an AI-agentic browser, because that's clearly what we all need. Another war of 2025 was fought by big tech trying repeatedly to bring down the internet. Google started this whole ordeal back in June when they introduced a bug to their cloud service control system. Then, their API management and IAM authorization pipelines failed, disrupting services like OpenAI and Shopify. A few months later, Amazon followed with their own outage of the most popular AWS region in the world. This time around, the outage was caused by a misconfigured update to their internal traffic routing system, which accidentally blackholed traffic between core networking components inside US East 1. Not wanting to be left out, Cloudflare also had a partial outage in October, this time thanks to a botched deployment of their configuration system that caused some of their edge nodes to reject valid TLS certificates, managing to bring down even down detector. If there is no one left to report on a problem, then surely there is no problem. Pretty smart. In other highlights of the year, the HH launched its own Linux distribution. Omarky is built on top of Arch Linux and the tiling window manager Hyperland, and it is promoted as an opinionated and beautiful desktop environment for developers designed to simplify the setup of a highly customized keyboard-first workflow. It received a lot of praise, and it managed to draw in even the famous PewDiePie, who had already made his own widely publicized switch to Linux earlier in the year. In the GoLand, things were as always quiet but efficient and productive. 2025 marked the release of the long-awaited Green Tea Garbage Collector, which delivered noticeable improvements in memory management for high-throughput services. Performance updates were added across the standard library, and we got a new secret mode aiming to increase the security of Go programs. Rust, on the other hand, is slowly cementing its position as the default choice for new high-assurance software, often replacing C++ in critical systems. Probably its highlight of the year is the fact that the consensus among Linux developers is that Rust in the kernel is no longer experimental and it is now a core part of the kernel and is here to stay. PHP is also far from being dead. Its 8.5 release was packed with quality of life improvements and Laravel is stronger than ever. Sure, these are just the updates for the tech I'm usually focusing on this channel, but please let me know in the comments if you guys are interested in exploring new languages or frameworks in 2026. But the bottom line is this, 2025 was a weird year for developers. The mood online shifted from enthusiastic experimentation to cautious fatigue. We are kind of tired of the AI hype, tired of layoffs, tired of half-baked AI integrations, and especially tired of our favorite YouTubers selling to private equity. Why are you the way that you are? We are also very close to reaching 100k subs, so please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and until next time, thank you for watching.